Hello there. Welcome to the 62nd episode of Split Focus, a film and TV podcast. My name is Simon Eady, and alongside me, I have my co-host and the conductor for the Spider-Man No Way Home hype train, Adrian Pinter. How does it go, sir? General Kenobi, it goes quite well, my friend. How are you, Simon Eady? I'm okay. I'm okay, you know? it's uh, this uh, The pandemic is wearing on me at this point, but... Um, I mean, it has been for a little while, but, uh, you know, I'm making it, so, sort of. Uh, for now. Uh, yeah. But just to get right into it, mm-hmm. did you see on the internet, the internet is such a wonderful place, you know, it's got conspiracy theories flying everywhere, mm-hmm. some more more drastic and, you know, painful to the rest of society than others. But one that's not super painful to society, but is just puzzling, is the... Sorry, I took away my dogs to finally get get that. Ellie. No. Wait. She's adamant on getting that toy. Did you take it away and then she took the toy back and Mm -hmm. started to squeak it again? Yes. Oh, a toy heist. It was. Mm. Now I put it behind my head. So you might hear her trying to get behind me, but I will block that. Mm. Okay. Is there a way to not confine her to this tight space so that... (laughs) <laughs> she doesn't interrupt us as much as I love Ellie. You know. Hello? Are you there? Are you still there? Oh. Yes. She literally just shut my laptop. Just <laughs> grabbed her paw and just shut my fucking laptop. Uh, yeah, yes. What I was just saying uh, before you couldn't hear me was, is there a way to not confine the dog to the tightest space in your home? I mean, Ellie's not a, a small dog. So if she wants that toy, she might just try to get that toy as, as proven by your shut laptop moments ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, she, she might. But uh, I don't know. Like, I, I'm home alone. I got the entire house to myself. I don't want to leave oh. her by herself. Oh, yeah, I see. That almost felt counterintuitive there. She's got she could have the whole house, but you're locking her into one room. But I'm not locking her in here. The door's open, Simon. Oh, she wants to be with you because yeah, you're pals. Oh, yeah, okay. She's my daughter. All right. All right. That's fair. You don't want to shut the door on her. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Anyways, as I was saying, conspiracy theories. There is one conspiracy theory just roaming around the internet. And it has to do with Ted Lasso star Brett Goldstein. Have you seen this, Adrian? I have indeed, Simon. I have indeed. Uh, Brett Goldstein uh, plays one of the uh, main characters in Ted Lasso, actually. And uh, yes. there's a, a wild theory about his character, Roy Kent. Yes, indeed. That Brett Goldstein doesn't actually play Roy Kent. No. That Apple is using some AI artificial intelligence software thing, this face recreating software to virtually put him into the show. Right, because of course, this is an Apple TV Plus show. Ted Lasso is an Apple TV Plus original show. Mm -hmm. And so big tech company, Apple, somehow they believe that Roy Kent is a CGI character. Mm -hmm. Which, uh, yes, I actually believe. No, you don't. I think that, no, I don't. That's wild. It's absolutely whack. And uh, I just find it funny that, again, like it just goes to show that people will make up anything on the internet and believe anything, regardless of how stupid it is. Kind of. Do like, they really believe it? I, I was trying to look that up, but I don't know if I got to an answer. Do they actually believe this is real? Because this seems like it's the most ridiculous theory ever. I mean, there's obviously some people that believe it's real. Because why else would they say that they think it's real? You know what I mean? Like it, it yeah. people have posted online believing that it's true, and uh, it's crazy. I'm sure it's like a very like it's a minority. Of people like like not many people believe this, right? But there there's enough, right? That there it's are many that, publications talking about this. That that's how much there is. Like it's not like you know it's not just like one thread on Reddit at this point. Now we got like Entertainment Weekly, Gizmodo, you know, The Verge. They're talking about Brett Goldstein being a CGI person. Actually, the Verge article I read specifically called <laughs> Brett Goldstein 
Goldstein's Roy Kent or whatever, Roy Kent or Brett Goldstein or both of them, CGI characters, which is just insane. The Verge, the tech website. <laughs> I mean, they would know best. They, they understand tech, so maybe they understand uh, how, how it works. I just wonder if but, they're jo- – they must be joking. That's why I, that's why I got the impression that the, they must oh, yeah. be joking. Yeah, there's no way the people that work there believe it and they're like actually posting that stuff. That, that's that's bananas. That's almost as ridiculous as if you ran like one of the most popular podcasts in the world and believe that horse to wormer is used uh, for to treat COVID. It's almost as ridiculous as that. Right. And we're not talking about us. We are the most uh, or the second most popular podcast mm-hmm. in New Zealand. And we don't believe that ivermectin works. Just to be clear, no. we're not talking about us, but we're not going to say who it is or, or you are. I can't control you and I can't see you on the other side of this feed here. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm sure people know about it if they already did. Um, but yeah, I, I think that theory is just the, the the Ted Lasso theory is just so funny to me. It's uh, it's really good. It's uh, I don't know. You know what? Let let people's Im- imagination run wild. This is one of those like harmless conspiracies. You know what I mean? It doesn't affect anyone negatively, really. Right. Yes. Maybe hurts Brett Goldstein's feelings a little bit. Maybe. The- and that's the other cool thing is that he posted to Instagram saying, I am a normal human man who does buffering and, you know, downloading and uploading. Like he yeah. was basically saying he's a normal man who's living in a, uh, a visual effects house. On it, And he did that with, funny enough, with an Animoji video. So he used yeah. Animoji, like a bit, uh, what is it called? Memoji now? Or it's a memoji of his own of his face that he created with the Apple iPhone. I don't know. I just thought that was a good way to poke fun at it. Like he didn't like take it too take himself too seriously. I guess. Yeah, it's uh, it's playful. You know what I mean? And and uh, we kind of need that right now. You know, we we kind of need that playful sort of stuff. Um, to speak to the Verge article, the Verge article is listed as this: Is Roy Kent from Ted Lasso CGI? You know what? I buy it. <laughs> that's the verge headline again they could be joking they probably are joking that would be ridiculous if they thought that but you never know anyway yeah you never know but yeah man uh, i guess on the topic of ted lasso um i've actually been watching season two this week oh mm-hmm. oh how many episodes have you have you watched i've watched five i believe there's seven out as of today um as of when we're recording this and i think oh, it's, it's nine episodes yeah, there's nine episodes this season, and I thought it was a good time to start watching it. I was, I was really in the mood to watch something a little bit more uplifting. Um, you know, I'm just sometimes I'm feeling a little bit down. You know what I mean? And, and I needed this show, uh, and it, and uh, I'm glad I started watching it because it really does make me feel better. It makes me smile. It makes me laugh. It makes me cry. Um, it's a really phenomenal show. Uh, again, Ted Lasso being an Apple TV Plus original series, it follows. Um, a guy named Ted Lasso who moves to the UK to start coaching a UK football team, football being soccer in the UK. And he was a former football coach, like a United States um, American football coach. And uh, him and his like co-partner or like, I guess, partner, um, coach partner, whatever you would call it. uh, They moved to the UK because they're hired by this woman who wants to actually ruin the team uh, because she's going through a messy divorce with her husband. And the the show kind of just progresses from there. And season two um, pretty much picks up not too long after the end of, of the first season. And it's, it's really great. It's just as good as the first one, if not better. And honestly, the, the reason I love this show so much is that, Every single character is just so three dimensional, like they feel like they 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 exist and they even explore how or why people act the way they do or why they're, you know, married to someone or or how they became married to someone. And it could be something as small as like, you know, just a single line, an entire scene or, you know, they just expand on a story arc. But I feel like they they always do it and it's done it's done very well. And again, in a very believable way. Um, I know you like the show as well, Simon. Have you started watching season two at all? I have not. I, I really did uh, hold off because I'm, I'm excited to watch it. But I know that when I watched it the last time, I just couldn't stop watching it. It was just so good that I was like, I, you know, when I started watching the first season, I watched the whole thing all the way through. And this time around, I thought, ah, 
it's hard to watch it all the way through when you you're stopped at 30 minute episodes you know you just kind of mm. stop and start and i didn't want to do that although now might be a good time to start because there's only a couple episodes left i guess um yeah exactly yeah two more episodes uh remaining um I, i've been watching about like one episode a night uh over the past week just here and there like i, I don't want to I don't want to binge it and be like, God damn it. Now I got to wait like three weeks to watch the rest of the episode. So yeah, you know, I've just been watching one episode a night and uh, again, yeah, it's just really great. And it's very uplifting because again, all the characters in the show are so likable, even unlikable characters have a reason to be liked is the best way to put it. And you know, there's reason behind them being un or, you know, acting a specific way that makes them unlikable. And you almost sympathize with, with characters and, and, you know, it really almost shows empathy. <laughs> like it, it makes you feel empathetic to, towards a bunch of different characters, which I really, really love. To speak to that briefly, I guess in the first season, I, f- I feel as though like Jason Sudeikis is Ted Lasso. He kind of embodies the concept of empathy. Even the people mm-hmm. who he finds out are being assholes throughout the show, throughout that first season, he kind of, he, he, he forgives so easily. He's just such an optimistic character in general. People mm-hmm. make bad decisions around him or to him to attack him or whatever. And he just flips it. And it's just, I don't know. That's the part of the uplifting thing you were talking about earlier. And I agree that when I watched the first season, I felt, I don't know. I felt better. It's just, it made me feel, uh, I don't know. It uplifted. It, it did do that yeah. for me. So like, I, I also find that I'm, not having the you know the best of times in COVID at the moment and during COVID during whatever the second year of COVID and I feel like maybe that's a good idea just to jump into that show for for that reason as well but um, but yeah I'm glad you're loving it. Do you find that this uh, this season season two is better the same or worse than season one? Like, what's your opinion on that? Uh, I honestly don't know. Like, I feel like it's either the same or better. And again, the f- season one was amazing. Like, I absolutely adored it. And I'm really loving season two as well. And Again, like it, the show, like you said, it's it's so goddamn positive <laughs> and it's incredibly heartwarming, but it doesn't, you know, shy away from the sad things. And yeah, it just makes me feel better as well. Like, again, I, I'm just, uh, you know, like sometimes I'm just feeling a little bit down and it, it definitely brings me back up just like the first season did. Um, but yeah, man, like it, it, it really is just as good, if not better than the first season, honestly. Cool. Yeah, that's Damn. awesome to hear. Yeah, I'm excited. I'll, I'll get into it. I think I can probably wait out maybe one more week and then start. Um, but uh, mm. that's great to hear they're on episode seven. So Yeah, man. Not many left to go. That's awesome. Awesome, but also sad because we're going to be going into another hiatus for another year, I'm sure. So Yeah, or however long. I'd argue it's Apple TV's currently their best series. And I've watched quite a few of them at this point, but I, I feel like it's it's great. So. Yeah, it really is. And like one thing I really love about this show as well is that um, whenever it seems like a, a character is going to make a dumb decision or or just a decision that seems uncharacteristic of how they regularly act um, just to kind of, a, you know, bring in drama like, I don't know, like like a CW show, as an example, like characters constantly make dumb and irrational decisions just to make drama happen within the show. Mm. This show veers away from that all the time. And it's one of the reasons I love it. You know, it'll like set things up like, oh no, like this character might cheat on this character. But, you know, they never go that route because that's not how that character would act in that situation. Just Again, it's it feels very well written. And every character, again, like I said at the beginning of uh, talking about this, every character seems so three-dimensional and lifelike and like they could exist and it never does, you know, make these characters do dumb decisions that make you dislike them. But the show, instead of relying on this over dramatic BS that so many shows fall into, it's it just makes this story go into like super interesting and unexpected di- directions that are that are very creative and and funny and, you know, joy filled and all of these things. And uh, again, I, I love this show so goddamn much. And uh, I'm really glad you recommended this to me uh, last year. And um, I'm excited to watch these, uh, you know, final, I guess four episodes. I still need to watch six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. Four episodes. So um, I can't wait for, for, for the last, uh, 
for these last four. And I, I really hope I'm sure it will get renewed for a season three. I hope to God it does. And uh, if or when, um, you know, season three comes out, you can uh, bet your bottom dollar. I'll be either resubscribing to Apple TV or, or keeping my subscription to watch it. There's some good shows coming out. Like the foundation does look really good, like from those trailers. So I, I do think there's, there's a reason to be an Apple TV plus subscriber. Like the, mm-hmm. every single one of these shows, I mean, take the, the writing or leave it kind of thing, or the ideas behind some of the shows. But I find that the overall production values on all of them are unreal. Like that's, I feel like that's a, that's a given. Like specifically we just, uh, my girlfriend and I just watched C season one, um, Mm -hmm. the show in which it's like hundreds of years after there's like a virus that uh, makes people blind. Um, So everyone goes blind and then they kind of, they're just like living in this blind world. Nobody can see at all. Mm -hmm. Um, And then they, Right in the beginning and in the trailer, they, there's two babies that are born that can see. And so what does that mean for this very strange backward society that, the, that they kind of live in? Like people are like living in the woods and they use pretty primitive, they're kind of living more primitive. They're not using technology and there's, I'm sure there's reasons for that I want to get into because I don't want to spoil anything. But it's got Jason Momoa on it, in it and honestly, I like it. I do like it, and some of the fight scenes and the choreography and the scenery and the chore- like, the actual cinematography is great. Music's pretty great too. There's one thing that's just the, that I don't like, and it's the writing. Some moments in it are just obtuse. It doesn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. The way some of the moments are written do- doesn't make sense. But the overall production value of this show, the acting in the show, and everything like that, I feel like is is good. And they're like teasing Dave Bautista being in season two. Season two just started up again so uh and again yeah. wait until that uh, finishes before we jump back in but that's uh that's a good example of again a, a show that it's kind of like 60 percent around tomatoes if i recall the reviews so it's not really well reviewed but it's like mixed reviews and i think it's because of the some of the writing again i almost want you to watch it because if you if you watch it i'm curious what you think of of it but i actually got recommended it although i kind of had it on my radar by martin who we referenced many episodes back a mutual friend of ours but anyway Mm. yeah i might give it a try like i'm not again uh, it didn't look good to me personally like from the trailer and stuff and it didn't really interest me um the trailer did interest me but i don't like bad writing and i find there's the plot there's plot points that aren't really holes but characters as you just mentioned make stupid decisions for the drama and that's the problem with the show ironically Mm. because it's on the same um, on the same line of what we were just talking about, but uh, but yeah, Ted Lasso doesn't do that, and C does, and it's like you, I don't know, it's almost for plot convenience. Another show that I've been watching that does something similar to this is The Walking Dead. Honestly, season ten, I love it. I love the season. I I think it's great, but there are certain characters making stupid decisions over and over and over again, and I just can't wrap my head around it. It just doesn't make sense, and it happens so often that I'm just like, I don't buy it. They're just stupid. How they live this long? It's season 10 of The Walking Dead. How are they making this many stupid decisions? And uh, anyway, I love it though. That This season's great. And I know you uh, you might disagree with me because by proxy, you told me that you kind of disagree with my assessment of this char- mm-hmm. particular character's stupid decisions. But alas, good season, weird character decisions. But honestly, I think The Walking Dead, it suffers from that CW thing. Doesn't it? Throughout, people make bad decisions. That's not a thing that's um, uncommon in that show yeah. as a whole. Not always, but certain points in certain seasons, characters just make dumb decisions. They're like, I don't like this character. I agree completely. Yeah, there, there's no doubt about that. Uh, it happens uh, quite a few times throughout Walking Dead's run. Yeah. Uh, I've watched a lot this week. Uh, it's kind of insane. Did you watch all, all Purge movies like I did? <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. But let's get into something. Uh, let's get into the Marvel content because we watched uh, Shang-Chi and The Legend oh. of the Ten Rings. Oh, we did. And we watched What If. And yeah. I, I feel like our review of that movie, at least for the Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, is due at this point. Mm-hmm. All right. Did you love it? Did I love Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings? Hmm. I would say... Just to be clear, we watched it in theaters. This is a theater-exclusive movie. We watched it at Cineplex, at our local Cineplex in Guelph, Ontario, mm-hmm. together. Yeah. We're not together because we can't talk outside this podcast, so it was kind of weird. Never have, never will. Yeah, it's uh, and and the nice part about it is it's doing well currently in its theatrical run. Like it, it, I think it broke the Labor Day weekend record for 
biggest box office open, if I read correctly. I might be wrong about that, but I, I swear to God, I read that just before the show started. In the pandemic? I think in general. Really? Yeah. Oh. Because it's because the Delta variant is, is wreaking havoc to the point where, and we're going to talk about this a little bit later, um, about how movies have been pushed back again. Mm-hmm. The, the movies awesome. that have been pushed back like 10 times have been pushed back into 2022. So I feel like, uh, you know, these companies are kind of wary of this whole situation. But yeah. But yeah, it seems to be doing well. Um, but yeah, in terms of did I love it, Simon? I loved some aspects of this movie. I would say oh. most aspects of this movie. Okay. Um, I think it's a really, really great movie. And it's definitely in the upper half of the MCU movies, pr- probably in my top 10 for sure, like easily, uh, which I guess would be about half of them. Um, and maybe even up there in my top five, honestly. Um, it does a lot of really amazing things. I do have a few gripes with the movie. Wait, wait, um, wait. It, Did you just say it's in the top five of your of the of the MCU movies? It just might be, Simon. Oh, oh, you kind of ta- started this conversation off with like, uh, there's some things that I just really don't like and I, I kind of like it. And it's like, top five no, is no, no, huge. No, no. There's like 23 movies, 24 movies, yeah. 25 movies. I don't even know how many there are at this point, but yeah. okay, that's good. That's crazy. Um, again, no, like I, I loved most aspects of this movie. There, again, I have a couple of gripes with it, but but as a whole, I, I really did enjoy this movie. I, I think we talked about black widow and i think black widow had some good action but you said it best how there is no memorable action and this movie shang chi and the legend of the ten rings has absolutely amazing action scenes the fight choreography is unbelievable it's so memorable it's so freaking awesome and i was literally i i audibly said out loud like a couple times like holy fuck like just like under my breath at some of the things they were pulling it was very it's interesting because i just watched uh i mentioned a couple episodes ago i watched it man um which is not necessarily a kung fu movie they do wing chun um and, and i guess there's some kung fu in it as well but this movie like really dives into that you know kung fu aspect and very you know over the top like crazy fight scenes with like people flying across with like different kicks and shit like that. And it's absolutely stellar. And I really, really, really love that about this movie. I think that's arguably one of the strongest points of this movie. And there's a lot of action. It's, it's nonstop in some cases, not, not necessarily nonstop because there's a lot of, you know, moments of pause and, you know, um, character reflection and, and even like flashbacks sprinkled throughout the movie, which I really, really loved. And I think it, it adds a lot to like, it adds a lot of emotional depth to the film. Um, but again, the action in this movie was just unbelievably great. Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. I I would agree. Like, um, I should point out Wing Chun is a style of Kung Fu just to, Clarify. Oh, it is okay. Yeah, I was. I, cool. When you said that, I was like, I'm pretty sure that's the case. So I just quickly looked it up here just to make sure. Thank you. you. Know, Thank we you don't get correct. like clarification, uh, cor- correction. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, I, I agree with you. Like the the action is amazing. There's incredible action set pieces. One that's in the trailer, and there's multiple clips of it. That bus uh, scene. There's one in like this skyscraper building. It's just. There's a lot of moments that are just really, really great action set pieces. And um, I think that Simu Liu did a great job. I think he was awesome. Aquafina was amazing as well. Like the oh, cast yeah. was just incredible and really funny. It was just like the – just up the alley of that, you know, the Marvel-style comedy that we've come so accustomed to, uh, which is awesome mm-hmm. as well. So like I'm really yeah. happy that they they kind of nailed that that tone uh, very well as well. I, I agree completely, man. Um, the one thing I really like about it too, is that I feel like um, in a lot of Marvel movies, the, the the main characters tend to be just super quippy about absolutely everything. Like, like most of the characters are just quip after quip after quip um, for the comedy. And I don't think that this movie falls down that rabbit hole, which is really nice. You know, there are some like really funny lines said, but it's just, I think it's just really great li- uh, writing in general. It doesn't feel like, you know, uh, Joss Whedon, like Avengers or Avengers Age of Ultron movie, where it's just like constant quips back and forth uh, for the laughs. It it felt like very well earned comedy. Not that I'm saying that's bad style of comedy, but it, it felt different enough. And again, I don't think 
I, I agree with you. The tone is definitely there. And there is some absolutely hilarious uh, like points in the movie um, that that is just like incredibly funny and, you know, makes you a laugh, smile, all that good stuff. But um, yeah, I don't I don't think it falls down that exact same line of comedy, which I, I did appreciate it. It felt unique and different. And uh, again, the chemistry between Aquafina and, and Simu Liu is is unbelievable. The the, the way yeah, they play off each other is, sure. is fantastic. And they, they have this awesome like platonic friendship that, you know, I just loved watching. I really love Aquafina. I've said multiple times in um in this podcast run that I just I just find her very charismatic. Uh, she's an awesome actor. She steals the show in a lot of things that she's in, even in like Crazy Rich Asians, which I didn't love. Like she's awesome in that movie. Um and again, like the farewell, which I absolutely adore and so on and so forth. Um, but yeah, man, I uh, I do agree with you. It is funny and it, it it does go in that like typical Marvel formula, but it's not the same like as a as a typical origin movie that I, I was kind of expecting from the trailers. Uh, yeah, well, that's my gripe with it. But mm. I think that it it is a very traditional Marvel formula film. And yes, it does take its liberties creatively. It does different things, which is great, but it is kind of the same formula that we've we've come to see for the most part. Like it it I feel like it follows pretty closely with a movie like Black Panther, which is kind of based on the concept and formula from Iron Man, uh, you know, the fight yourself type scenario and the character who's reluctant, doesn't want to do this. <laughs> they don't want to be the hero everyone needs, but then they get kind of forced into it. And then there's like a training type scenario where it, it, it's similar. It's similar. I don't want to spoil anything, so I'm not going to go through the whole plot. But the, mm. the, the trailer itself, I find it kind of gives away some of those aspects. The stuff in between, that's what's more original. And that's what makes this a better, uh, uh, like almost a better version of that traditional formula, I guess. Mm-hmm. So it is great. I don't want to, I don't want to hit it too hard, or, or you know, disparage the film too hard for that specific thing because it's not that big of a deal at this point. The formula is used so often by Marvel in the Marvel Cinematic Universe because it's proven, it's tried and true. You know what I mean? So it's not really that big of a deal, and it's a skeleton. Really, it's not the formula. Isn't really the whole thing, but you can kind of predict the beats because of the fact that it does follow in that, those footsteps. And it's, again, being a predictable film is never something that's terrible, but it's nice to see when you see a movie like Spider-Man Far From Home, Spider-Man Homecoming, Thor Ragnarok, uh, you know, Captain America Winter Soldier. Uh, I'm sure um, the next Spider-Man film, uh, mm-hmm. Home Away From Home or Far From, no. From Spider-Man, no. this is the multiverse one. Right. Yeah, that's the worst title ever, but no... No way home, no way home is the title of it. Anyways, so that's that's kind of my two cents on that. Um, what was your wait? So you don't fault it too hard for going the Marvel formula route. What is it that you don't like about this movie? I'm kind of curious. Um, it's it, it, I, I don't want to because it's kind of a like it's not it's kind of a spoiler uh, to be fair. Like the thing that I I didn't totally okay. enjoy about it. It's mostly related to. Uh, part of the ending, um, the 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 initial process, and you know Shang Chi's. Uh, Just to be clear, we're not going to spoil it here. We're we're going to yeah. do a, a closer look episode, a brief, a closer look as a episode, which will launch most likely on Friday of this week. Um, we're recording this on a Saturday. This these episodes always launch. Our split focus regular episodes always launch on Mondays, and we do a closer look spoiler cast type episode built for Friday. That's the the plan anyway. But uh, mm-hmm. so we're not going to spoil it, but you, you can allude to it if you'd like, and then we can talk about it in more detail on the a closer look episode. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's kind of just like a decision that Shang Chi makes closer to the end of the movie, and how um, he almost has like a lack of um, I don't even know how to word this properly. He just it almost seems like he trusts a little bit too easily um, a certain you know group of characters, okay. and without any sort of curiosity curiosity to whether or not what he was being told prior to meeting these people was true. And I felt like that was a little bit just too um, 
you know, the puzzle just fit and they, you know, they kind of brushed over it. I feel like they could have added like maybe 10 or so minutes of, 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 uh, you know, Shang-Chi exploring, um, you know, what he was told prior to the arrival of a specific place. Again, I'm I'm speaking in total vagaries, but, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely dive into it in the closer look episode a bit, but again, um, it wasn't a huge uh, gripe with that movie. Um, it's actually fairly minor. Uh, and again, I, I really, really love this movie and I want to watch it again, actually, just because the action scenes are just so entertaining, jaw dropping. And, you know, your eyes are just glued to this goddamn screen and it's fucking badass, dude. It's the best way to put it. And I really, really love this movie. And uh, yeah, I'll probably watch it again in theaters this week. I'm not even joking. I, I know um, I wanted to go watch it with uh, Ken. Um when we went, uh, but unfortunately he wasn't able to make it. So I might go with him uh, later on this week. Ken being one of uh, our friends uh, that also writes into the show almost on a weekly basis. Yeah, yeah. indeed. 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 Um, okay. Yeah. That's uh, interesting. Okay. So we'll get more detail. I'll get more detail out of you in the, a closer look episode. The reason why, why we're going to do in a closer look episode for this particular movie um, is because honestly, there's there are a bunch of things that I do want to talk about. So details about the MCU that were revealed in this movie that I think mm-hmm. are a little bit shocking, and they're really cool. And I don't want to spoil them here because we just don't spoil anything on our podcast unless it's like six plus years old or something like that. We're really yeah. kind of careful about that because that's kind of the idea. We want you to enjoy the movie. You know, we don't we don't want to tell you the story of what happened in it. That'd be kind of pointless, yeah. especially because this movie just came out. People are a little bit hesitant to maybe go to the movie theaters. Um, so there's that. There was one other thing. Oh, yes. I actually really enjoyed it. I'm, I'm curious what you think about it too. In the way that the pacing was done in this movie too, I found it was very nicely done. I just mm-hmm. feel like overall, like the way they did the legend storytelling where they kind of told these like legends of, uh, thousands of years ago and uh, upwards to present day. And the way that they told them in very specific spots in the movie, they don't hit you hard with it all at once. They kind of just Mm -hmm. drop it in. And in between the action sequences, almost like they had a really neat map that kind of mapped it out. And it it just felt like it just – you got humor, action sequence, a legend kind of history story where you got – they're maybe telling it with – I don't know. They they tell they they kind of told these stories for the past with flashbacks. They told it with uh, statues. They at one point they they did some really neat things with that too. And I, I just I find that this movie is very well directed. I think that Destin Daniel Cretton did a great job. And I just I don't know. I I just think that it's competently done almost all the way through. And the humor elements they don't really. This is the thing I, I didn't like about Captain Marvel. We kind of talked about this before captain marvel put humor in that made fun of the mcu as a concept Mm -hmm. plot points in the mcu were made fun of they kind of did that at one point and i didn't really love it at that in this movie but i find that for the most part they were just not doing that and they respected what came before it and i that is something i really really am worried about because of the captain marvel movie i just Mm -hmm. i every time i go into one of these movies i'm like oh no how are they going to think that they're pushing the envelope by making fun of a previous MCU movie's plot point and kind of retconning it? So that, that's something that I've always kind of worried about, which I had never been worried about before Captain yeah. Marvel, if you know what I'm yeah. saying. I, I, I know exactly uh, what you're talking about in particular. Yeah, we don't want like a Rise of Skywalker situation, especially. That right. Is bad. <laughs> yeah, that was a whole other level of retconning and various mistakes. But but yeah, I um, I love this movie. I, I really do. And again, the action sequence, as you said, all the points you said, basically, I, I agree with you. And like Aquafina is just so good. And Simu Liu, who I've never watched before, I've never watched Kim's Convenience. I had the thought to watch it, but then they end, it's going to end abruptly. And I was like, oh, I guess not then. I won't watch it because it's ending abruptly. <laughs> so that's the only reason I guess I didn't go into that. Um mm-hmm. But that's a Canadian TV series that Simu Liu uh, came from. I feel like the marketing campaign with Simu Liu and it as well for Cineplex, etc. It's really good and competently done. I'm again, I'm impressed with this whole endeavor. I, I really like this, and I'm glad it's reviewed very well. I'm glad it's doing really well at the box office. This is amazing, and I'm so excited because mm-hmm. the, honestly, I don't think the Black Widow movie. It made me excited for the MCU, but it's like you can't really get that excited because 
it's like a character that you know is gone. Like Black Widow, mm-hmm. Scarlett Johansson is not going to be in the MCU anymore. And they could have done something. That's another criticism for that movie is that it didn't make me excited for the MCU in a strange way that I feel like it could have. It could have really done more to maybe talk about the stories before it because they reference points in in you know in the MCU with Black Widow's character. They reference many flashback scenes that they don't, you think they're going to talk about in Black Widow, but they kind of just glance over them and don't go mm-hmm. into them. Which is odd because it could have fleshed out more of a backstory for other characters who are going to be still in the MCU when Scarlett Johansson's out. So I don't think yeah. they did that very well. So I wasn't very excited after watching Black Widow to see the rest of the MCU, the Marvel Cinematic Universe movies. I am very excited to see what happens next because of this movie. I don't know if you would agree with that. I agree 100 percent, man. Uh, the the implications set in this movie like of what is – is to come is incredibly exciting and I'm curious what it all means. Um, and yeah, like I can't wait for more and I'm curious what Eternals is going to do. And if Eternals is going to be as good as this movie and, and what it, it it's going to mean to the wider universe and whether or not it can, uh, the MCU can maintain this momentum of me wanting to see more and more of it. Um, because yeah, I do agree with you. Like after black widow is kind of, I was a little bit down on it. Um, and then now with like, what if going on, um, which I guess we'll dive into in a bit. Like I, I was a little bit down on the MCU in, in terms of that aspect as well. Um, but yeah, man, I, I'm excited to see what Eternals is going to do. And if that is going to connect to, you know, Shang-Chi in any, sing- in, in any way. And then obviously the Hawkeye series I'm quite excited for, but yeah, I don't know. Um, I, I agree exactly uh, with what you said, man. I agree with you. Cool. Look at us just agreeing. Look at us. Look at us. Yeah. Agreeing. Indeed. Mm-hmm. Indeed. Just just bring Aquafina into the Avengers, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'd love that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, catch our a closer look episode if you've watched this film and you really want to listen to a deep dive of what we thought about it on a on a deep dive perspective. But um but yeah, let's move on to what if, shall we? The what if episode, episode three, no four. Four. Yes, four. Yeah, let's do it. What did you think of episode four of What If? Um, I really liked it, Simon. I thought it was I thought it was great, actually. Uh, I think it's probably the best one so far. This one being uh, called, I think, What If Doctor Strange Lost His Heart Instead of His Hands, if I recall correctly. I think that's the name of the episode. And, you know, it explores the um, idea of, you know, what would happen if Doctor Strange, instead of losing, you know, his 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 hands in in that initial car accident that he ha- that he had in the uh, Doctor Strange movie, but he lost the love of his life, um, and it's it's really cool. I, I think they do a really great job, you know, diving into the choices that he that that he'd make, and and you know the direction the story goes is quite uh, quite saddening, honestly. Dark, yeah, it's dark. It's it's depressing. It's to me the best version of this show so far. I almost kind of wish, and I do find that this what if Disney plus Marvel cinematic universe type series, I do kind of believe that it's gotten better and better and better every episode. Like I do think Mm -hmm. that that's happened. I I know you might, you know, swap two and two and three episode two and three, but I I, I do, I do think that it's gone better in my opinion. And I do, I also think that because of the, the watchers rule, um, Mm -hmm in this episode it should have been episode one i i really i feel like it's the most uh multiversal focused episode of all four and i think that they kind of missed an opportunity to really introduce this with a bang this series because mm-hmm. i really didn't like episode one like i, I genuinely did disliked it so yeah. i i think that if they threw that somewhere else in the series actually it probably would have fallen off no i don't know actually because that that, that that episode disappointed me so much um but you know you got to start strong. I think that the the or at least at least release two episodes at once. You know, release that first episode and maybe release the second episode together, something like that. Do like a double feature um, to be right. a little bit more like okay, so it's not all bad. Um, but yeah, I, I agree with you on that front for sure, man. Um, oh, one highlight about this episode is that literally all of the voice cast or all of the actors return to play their respective characters, even Rachel exactly. McAdams. Wild. Yeah, it's a, wild, was like, a wild situation. I, I found even honestly Benedict Cumberbatch, or, or or he's still in the MCU, but we're Tilda Swinton. Like, come on, like yeah. you have like all star people. Like Tilda Swinton's an incredible actor. Like mm-hmm. seriously, 
So I don't understand. This is a strange thing. I, I do wonder, this is kind of a question I have is that, is this kind of a telling of who's going to be in the MCU, you know, going forward, who's really just in it for the contract and may not hang around too often that mm-hmm. we know that Scarlett Johansson's in Go hot on. water with Disney. Yeah. So that's probably done. Um, but Robert Downey Jr., I really hope that he's coming back for this kind of multiversal war. Because if there's a multiverse, yeah. then you obviously Iron Man's a huge part of this MCU to start. Mm-hmm. So could they create a, a contract with him in the far future? We're talking like five years away. Oh, maybe. You yeah. think? You think no? I, I don't think so. Uh, I, I personally am on the on the side that he probably wouldn't return. If anyone would come back, I, I would make the argument for Chris Evans. To come back as Captain America? Well, he's um, apparently contracted for something. There, okay. There's that. Remember we talked about that, but then he de- denied it. But people yeah. still believe that he is in the MCU. He may, he signed something. So there's a belief there, although he did a weird coy deny, without actually denying anything specific, he went on Twitter and said, that's the first I'm hearing about it. Or yeah. something along those lines, if you remember that. We, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that was last year, I believe. Yeah, I do think there is something, and I think he's willing too. It's interesting. I, I think that Robert Downey Jr. might be able to be, you know, coerced into coming back, or not coerced, but <laughs> convinced. He's a huge part of this. He made this thing what it, mm-hmm. what it is. He's a huge puzzle piece. That if they didn't have Robert Downey Jr. in that Tony Stark role, I don't know if the MCU would be what it is. It's like, let's be honest, like, yeah. they wouldn't have had as much hype. They wouldn't have had a, a, as many, you know plays to get huge big name directors and actors going forward like it, it might have if we're talking what if what if robert downey jr wasn't cast as tony stark you know what i mean like yeah exactly if, if it was tom cruise yeah right which was a <laughs> thing that actually people were thinking about yeah that the, yeah, the marvel to, execs were thinking about yeah shout out to john favreau for having the foresight and uh you know sticking to wanting robert downey jr to to be tony stark in in iron man I love John. Right. Power. Yeah. It made him one of the biggest stars ever. Like exactly. he was amazing before that, but he was kind of, there's a bit of a rocky history with Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, exactly. And, and like, that's it's, again, it's, that's an incredible redemption story. That's just, I don't know. It's, it's amazing, but yeah, I'm, I'm happy to, I'm happy to like, see it. Um, in, t- in terms of, you know, people, I guess, returning, I just mentioned, you know, Rachel McAdams being in, in the show. I was like, right. this, this, this is super cool. But the weird part is the character of Christine in the What If show looks absolutely nothing like Rachel McAdams, whereas everyone else looks very similar to the original character. I thought that was a weird choice. No. I um, I saw it. I could see Rachel McAdams, but I, I can see what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. I, I honestly could not see Rachel McAdams. I was like, this looks like any person, like literally any person. Yeah. yeah. Like, it was just very generic looking character like not modeled by like after anyone whereas again like dr strange was obviously modeled after benedict cumberpatch you, you look at that and it's like oh yeah that's benedict cumberpatch um so yeah it was it, amazing it, in this and he's in it so much like i, is, I really yeah. i don't know there's a certain appreciation i have for benedict cumberpatch it, when you see him in an interview he's got like pretty dry humor but i fi- i feel like he's in it the guy's like a no half measures kind of guy and mm-hmm. it's awesome because i I almost I want to see this is the thing that like, is like a pipe dream maybe but I'm curious if they could model the, the rest of the MCU around Strange because Strange and Stark are actually in some ways similar in their the way that their ego ego operates so mm. I, and because Strange is such a I don't want it to be necessarily as like you know re- world revolving around like or the, the MCU revolving around as it was with Tony Stark but I, I l- really like the idea of Strange being the guy who knows. That, and other other people don't know, so yeah, like they did with Endgame as an example. It's just yeah. such an interesting dynamic that I just love, and I'm hoping that they they're going to do that for years. And I'm hoping Strange is like a, a centerpiece of what the MCU becomes. Is it, and that's what's so great about him being in Spider Man, um, No Way Home. To be yeah. honest, yeah, I, I, yeah, I agree with you completely there. But yeah, I, I like this episode of What If. I thought it was really good. I'm curious what next week is. I'm, I'm waiting for that zombies episode. Because I'm a sucker for zombies. Oh, yeah. There was a trailer for that. Yeah. Or that was in the trailer. It's a little snippet with zombies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. I I watched, as I mentioned earlier, like a lot of things this week. And I watched, uh, I'll just list them off and I'll, I'll go into each one very, very briefly. I mentioned I watched C, which I enjoyed. Mm-hmm. But again, the writing could have been better. 
I watched uh, The Final Girls, which is a Netflix, uh, t- uh, sorry, a Netflix movie um, with some pretty good actors in it. Like it was, it was an enjoyable, it was an enjoyable movie to watch. I would say it's potentially worth a watch. It's a horror movie. Did you see that movie on Netflix? The Final Did you see Girls. It on- did you see it on Netflix at all? It's a horror no. movie. It's like a slasher film in a summer camp. The f- oh, damn. I'm into that. The final. Yeah, course. like base, that's why, again, the, the girlfriend, my girlfriend really wanted to watch it for, for that reason. But there's basically these people get sucked into a movie, uh, a movie screen, and it's a, it's a horror movie. Uh, it's not called The Final Girls. It's called something about camp. Camp, camp something, camp, camp slash him up or some shit. And then they get sucked in and they have to like survive this crazy guy. Like this guy who was tormented as a child at the summer camp and is like a crazy murderer. Mm-hmm. And so they have to survive, but they're, it's almost like Wizard of Oz because they're stuck in this movie. It's, it's kind of neat. I liked it. It, it. it wasn't the greatest thing ever. Oh, sorry. Thomas Middleditch is an actor who's in it, who, who was just amazing in it, to be honest. I, I thought he was awesome. And Ali uh from... Uh, Arrested Development and yeah, maybe uh, right other things. Yeah, so so that's really cool. And I I know you love Thomas Middlejitch, and I just find that everything he's in is he's hilarious. I just think he's really great. But uh, so that might be something you might want to might want to watch in the future. But I also watched Only Murders in the Building. I watched Nine Perfect Strangers, mm-hmm. and I only watched a few episodes of these two shows because there's not that many episodes released. Isn't Only Murders in the Building like that? There's only one episode of that. I know it's like I think it's like a hundred percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, there's three. Yeah. I really, I heard a lot of good things about this show. Like, I really want to watch it. It just came out yeah. of nowhere, and then I saw that the reviews were glowing. Um, it has Selena Gomez in it, who I'm a big it fan does. of. Wizards of Waverly Place is one of the greatest shows ever created. Right. Uh, that that's and- the most memorable actor in that show. Everyone else, ah, you know, you don't know them. Yeah, a bunch of no names. <laughs> yeah, no, but uh, Steve Martin and um, Martin Short, who are mm-hmm. an awesome duo, and I watched the trailer for this, and I honestly wasn't super into it. And then my girlfriend and I watched this show. We watched the first two episodes and we're into it. We we do like it. This is really cool. I'm really, again, I think it's really neat. There's two guys. There's uh, Martin Short's character and uh, Steve Martin. They're trying to start a podcast, a true crime podcast based on a murder that happens in their building. Oh, That's basically the premise. And Selena Gomez is also living in the building. And they all three of them listen to this podcast and so they all decide, sorry, listen to this other, po- there's like some other true crime podcast. So they bond over this when there's like mm-hmm. a fire alarm pro- pulled or whatever. And then they become friends sort of. And then they decide to do a podcast based on a murder in their building. So it's it's a, it's pretty neat. I, I think that the humor is pretty funny in it. And I like, I don't know what it is about me, but I like things that are on a train. I like movies that are on a train, TV series that are on a train mm-hmm. and movies that are in a hotel or like a really nice apartment building. That's almost like a ho- living in a hotel. Yeah. It's a hotel in or sorry, it's an apartment in New York City. It's quite nice. It's like a luxury apartment. Yeah. And uh I don't know, there's something about that. Even like I didn't really like it that much, but sweet life the sweet life of Zach and Cody. I didn't Love like the show. actual show, but the premise of them living in this hotel was the greatest aspect of that show. So yeah. anyway. The Prindle. Yes, the Prindle. <laughs> yeah. It's an okay yeah. show. Um only Murders in the Building. That's one of those like Hulu originals. That's a star original here in Canada, correct? That's correct. Yeah, it's it's funny if you want if you end up watching it because there's not that many episodes yet, and they're thirty minute episodes. It's a comedy, of course. It's Steve Martin and Martin Short, but and Selena Gomez and Selena Gomez. I'm sorry, S- sorry to Selena Gomez. Uh, but if you uh, if you watch it, it's crazy how many Apple devices that are in the show. And I do wonder, and I, I didn't look this up. I should have. As a foolish of me. I do wonder whether this show was initially an Apple TV Plus original because it's nonsense. There's an Apple Pencil in it. I'm like, come on. An iPad Pro. There's multiple Macs, iPhones. They don't use anything but Apple devices and they show the Apple uh-huh. logos constantly. So I'm like, I don't understand. It's possible that they just use Apple devices and that's fine. But when she's drawing on an iPad Pro with an Apple Pencil, I'm like, come on. <laughs> Let's get real. <laughs> Why is this come happening? On. What the hell? <laughs> and it's weird because Ted Lasso's Apple TV Plus's best show, and they kind of need another comedy like that because they've got a lot of dramas, but they don't have – they have a couple comedies, but the, the comedies are not their strongest suit until Ted Lasso released the first season. So anyway, I don't know. I'm going to look that up for next Mythic week Quest and see if I can – Mythic Quest again. Mythic Quest was amazing. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Mythic Quest is amazing. Mythic Quest is unbelievable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Apple TV Plus has a lot going for it, I must say. Like I, yeah. I think it's worth subscribing to. 
But yeah, I agree. I got I gotta I gotta watch a bunch of stuff. I still want to watch Servant and all that. And uh, yeah. Chris Evans is the father to a boy that maybe killed someone? Question mark That show. And, right, uh, uh, defending Jacob. That one. The name of that one. And honestly, Mosquito Coast is awesome. I yeah, don't I understand why the reviews are so bad. It doesn't make sense. Like they're not bad. They're just middling, and I don't get it. Yeah. it, it they should be better than that. I honestly think Justin Theroux does a great job. That whole sh- the, the dynamic of the family, great. It reminded me very much. Again, I think I said this before of Ozark. Of Ozark. But, Jinx. Yes. And I also watched Nine Perfect Strangers, which is an Amazon TV series with an incredible cast. Did you see anything about Nine Perfect Strangers, Adrian? Uh, I think so. I feel like I've seen like like snippets and ads for it. Um, this is like an, an anthology series, right? That like follows different characters. Is it? Um, that like, is it like mean anthology or? series? Is in next season will be something else? I didn't. Uh, read I, I that thought one each there. episode was like uh like an anthology. Like like each no. episode followed different characters, but it's like kind of like almost slightly connected. But yeah, like I like it has Melissa McCarthy in it. I think that's what the like that's the ad I saw. That's yeah, it's got Nicole Kidman, Melissa McCarthy. It's got Michael Shannon in it. It's got Luke Evans in it. Um, mm. it's got Samara Weaving in it. <gasps> I love Samara Weaving. It's got uh, Manny Jacinto from um uh, The Good Place. It's got oh. Bobby Cannavale, which I I honestly think is he's awesome in everything I've ever seen him, and he's fantastic. Um, Bobby Cannavale, you might know him from Mr. Robot as an example. Yeah. As that weird fixer dude. Um, yeah. No, it's it's awesome. I think that this show, I, I shouldn't say it's awesome. It's good. I'm liking the mystery. I'm liking – it's intriguing. I'm very intrigued. Uh, we've watched now three episodes, and it's basically about – Nicole Kidman runs this – kind of a spa or like a, I don't know what the, what the better word for this would be, but she's running this like getaway, this retreat, uh, like a, a resort that she chooses the guests. And in this case, she chooses nine perfect, perfect strangers. strangers. Oh my gosh. <laughs> she chooses nine specific people that she's going to have. They, a lot of people apply, but she doesn't take every one of them. She takes the ones that she thinks are valid because she got to create chemistry between the guests. And then she tries to fix their lives in various ways. So if somebody has like a drug addiction, she's going to fix that. If somebody's, you know, feeling down in their life, they're depressed, whatever, what have you, that's what she's trying to fix. But there's this underlying mystery underneath the show and it's good. I wonder if the mystery is just going to be, you know, it's going to deflate badly, like a bad balloon deflating. I I feel like it might- yeah, it's just going to be like a, as you described for one division, I think it was a wet fart, or, or mm-hmm. you know, it's not going to be the greatest reveal. But so far, I am intrigued, and there's a, I don't know, it's it's very interesting to watch these people because they're so different, and the actors are so good that because they're playing off of each other in potentially monologues, etc. Um, it's just. It's very fun to watch. I just, yeah. I'm very intrigued by it. And I, I'm curious to see where it goes from here. I am definitely going to be watching the rest of it. Also, the intro, also very amazing. I think that the intro music used is great. I think the, the choreo- I keep saying choreography, cinematography is amazing as well. Mm-hmm. I think it's, it's well done. It's, it's overall well done. I just, I don't want it to fall flat and I don't know what to expect in that regard. But Fair I recommend enough. it to you so far. After okay. three episodes, this nine perfect strangers. I just I just uh, googled it real quick. This is an interesting one because it's a Hulu original series, but it's on Amazon oh. Prime here in Canada. Oh, so it is one. Hulu. Good call. So that's a yeah. good call out for anyone who's in the United States. This is not on Amazon Prime there. Yeah. I'm assuming. But again, this is one of those weird situations where it's like, why, why isn't it, it on Disney on Plus? Star, yeah. You're right. That is strange. Why yeah. isn't it on Disney Plus in Canada? That's how they handle Hulu content in Canada. Mm -hmm. is on the star sub channel of Disney plus. Hmm. That is, that is strange. I never thought of that when I was, and I started watching that, but yeah. Anyway, sorry to interrupt. What do for you? What the? On it. I thought so. What the hell? It's over, Adrian. The AI is taking over. That was Siri. I I apologize Mm. for her very poor timing and her interruption audience um sorry one last thing that i watched this week i don't want to go too long i've I've talked very much about the things i've watched although there's a lot of neat shows and movies coming out lately so it's it's kind of an exciting time to be alive i think 
Yeah, and to be alive. This thing did not come out recently. The last thing I watched this week was Willy's Wonderland, <gasps> the Nicolas Cage movie that I have a feeling because it's written right here that you watched as well. Yeah, I watched this. Uh, I watched this last week, not this past week, um, and I just decided not to like talk about it because we we had a a lot to do um, the week prior. And yeah, I, I did watch this movie. What did you think, Simon? Um. I, this is absolutely nuts, and I just love. Yep. <laughs> I just love Nicolas Cage. I just think that he's just great, and like I, I, I it kind of reminded me a little bit, and it's not that, obviously not even close, but uh, of Mandy a little bit, and it's just like Nicolas Cage just wrecking shit up, but uh, he doesn't yeah, say he's... a single word. He says yeah, zero he words <laughs> in the entire he just... movie grunts a bunch and like nods his head occasionally did he even grunt yeah he did. oh when he's yeah. beating beating things with you know a bat or whatever yeah okay mm-hmm. and uh yeah this movie is just absolutely ridiculous it's incredibly self-aware it knows the tone that it's going for and it just it doubles down on it um it's incredibly campy like incredibly campy and uh it's really fun it's uh it's the premise is essentially nicholas cage he you know, drives over some, you know, spikes on the road in the small town and, you know, has to get his car repaired. But the mechanic says like, oh, we don't take debit or credit. We only take cash. The way that you can get your money back is by working in uh, as a janitor in this uh, factory called, sorry, this this old children's play place uh, called Willie's Wonderland. Think like kind of Chuck E. Cheese. And uh, when he's in there, the animatronics in the uh, building uh, try to kill him. And indeed, uh, indeed they do kind of where it goes. It's very obviously inspired by like Five Nights at Freddy's and things like that. It is. But I feel like the best line that encompasses this movie and it, it, it's I don't know if it's necessarily recited very well. But uh, at one point, one of the characters is like there. He's not he's not stuck in here with them. They're stuck in here with him. That's in the trailer. It's literally but, that. That's a line from Watchmen that Rorschach says. <laughs> oh, is it? <laughs> Yeah, oh, yeah. Didn't. Rorschach literally is like, "Oh, it is. Yeah, it like, is from the comic." Yeah, yeah. Like you're, you're like I'm not, you're not stuck, stuck in here, here with you. With you, you're stuck in here with me. Yeah, he yeah, just, yeah. Like, goes on uh, a rampage there, and yeah, yes. that's immediately what I thought of. I was like, what the fuck? But it works in this context because he's just such a badass, and yeah. uh, it was very entertaining to watch. Do I recommend it to everyone? Um, if you have an open mind, that's what I would say. <laughs> if you are in the mood to turn off your mind for about an hour and a half and just watch some grotesque violence against robots, yeah. If you're not in the mood for anything like that, do not watch this movie. There, <laughs> you have to. I think. I think it's more about if you like horror movies, like thriller slasher movies, you're gonna like this movie. If like comedy, you horror. know. Right. If if you're not like to you know take yourself too seriously, I feel like yeah. that's the key. Like I again watched this with a girlfriend, looked over at her multiple times, and she I was like, I'm not sure if she's loving this. <laughs> Cause her face was like <laughs> kind of contorted at certain moments. Cause I would look over at key moments and I was like, that's a ridiculous moment. Let's see what she's thinking. And I, you know, turn over a little bit. Hmm. She's her face looks her mouth is agape. Her eyebrow one of her eyebrows is raised. I don't know. It's a strange, it's a strange movie, but she liked it. She did, she didn't in the end like it, but you got to have an open mind. That's what I would say. Fair enough. Very enjoyable. I enjoyed it. I had a fun time. I had fun with it. It's definitely like a fun movie. Yes. Yes, indeed. All right, Adrian, let's move on to the news here, shall we? Honestly, I'm going to say yes this time because I feel like we've gone on quite long. Yeah, we got to get this show on the road here. Mm Mm-hmm. Let's begin with a small collection of more focused stories that have been particularly pertinent this week. Number one, as reported by entertainment website IGN, the TV series adaptation of video game series Life is Strange is very much still in the works with musician Sean Mendez now set to produce the series and look after the show's music. Life is Strange is an anthology adventure game series that typically follows high school students experiencing a coming of age type story. There have been three games in the Square Enix published series so far with the fourth, Life is Strange True Colors, arriving later this month. The show has been in the very early stages of development since 2016, but just recently, Anonymous Content, the production company behind Netflix's 13 Reasons Why, has been onboarded to the project, with Sean Mendes to produce as well. 
Adrian, what are you thinking about this? Because I know that you love the Life is Strange video game series. So what do you mm-hmm. make of this new news after many years of this being sort of in development hell? Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. I'm of, uh, Again, I'm of two minds of this. I love Life is Strange. The original Life is Strange and Life is Strange Before the Storm, which is the prequel to that, uh, are um, some of my favorite games of all time. Uh, the story that that first season and that prequel uh, tell are one of my favorite stories in any medium. I love it. I've played it multiple times. It made me ball my eyes out more times than I can count. And it's uh gut wrenching and, and heart squeezing series. And it's, it's, it's phenomenal. And if they can recreate that on the, you know, big like on the tv screen that's cool but a lot of what made that game or both those games so great is yeah there's a story that's being told but you can make a lot of these decisions and you know the decisions you have to make have huge impacts and you feel the weight of the choices you make and i don't know how you can necessarily recreate that um effectively in like a tv show simply put Uh, i'm curious if they're gonna you know base the series on that you know first game and the prequel series or if they're gonna try to tell something wholly original which i'd be more than okay with i'd almost prefer that uh, personally because again i've made the um like made the claim about the the last of us um and how like i I want them to make a tv series based on that game and you know tell that story in a in a way that i can you know show it to my parents and stuff like that but but it's also relatively linear that game exactly well. exactly and and yeah it's easy to tell that story um and also i feel like the last of us i don't think you can put a controller in anyone's hand and they can play that game but with life is strange realistically if i you know spent a little bit of time with my parents and showed them the basic controls like they could get the hang of that game relatively easily it's one of those it's like, on mobile yeah, it's on iOS it, and Android. Exactly, exactly. Like you can play the game super easy in, in, in a lot of different mediums. So it's one of those stories that I feel like it, it is accessible to pretty much everyone uh, and very easily played. Um, now, I will admit, like I, I tried playing Life is Strange 2, um, the, the sequel uh, made by Don't Not Entertainment, and I, di- I didn't love it. I played the first two episodes and it did not have its hooks in me. And like, I do want to go back and beat it, but it's just... I'm not loving that the story they're telling there. Um, to, to be completely honest, and Life is Strange: True Colors is being made by uh, a separate studio that made the prequel to the original game, which is amazing. And had no business being as an amazing of, of a three episode story that was, and it's arguably my favorite, um, like three episodes of the entire series. Um, so, which you know, actually, it's good to point out. This is a a game that. Kind of started that concept, not completely, because there was the Telltale Game series as well. Yeah. But this is a, a a game that was doing episodes where they didn't release the game all at once. They released it in episode chunks, like literally mm-hmm. were called episodes for each of these Life is Strange games. I think the new yeah. Life is Strange game is being released all at once, if I'm not mistaken. It is indeed. Yeah, this is the first time they're going to release it all at once, which is, a, I think, a great idea. Uh, I think one of the major reasons I did not... Uh, really love the second life is strange I remember I pre-ordered it. I was so excited and the first episode dropped and it dropped and it was in August and I played that first episode and the second episode dropped in I think December and the game literally wasn't finished these five episodes weren't finished for over a year and a half from when like the game originally launched and I pre-ordered it for the 50 bucks and before the second episode even came out they did a price drop to like 20 bucks and I felt pretty burnt about that I was like that's the fuck? dumb. Like, why am I like, again, I, I, I wanted to support them and I was happy to, but it's just like, it, I felt a little bit burned by that. And it, that it makes uh, sense. Soured yeah. My, yeah. It soured my taste a bit. And well, they're all getting the, the same game that you paid for and they're all, you're all getting it at the same time, basically, but you paid for it in advance. It's yeah, exactly. I paid $30 to play the first episode before everyone else. <laughs> And that's yeah, really it's a little it. different. Like, you yeah. know, a game goes on sale. You play the game initially. That's fine. You you bought it. Let's say you pre-ordered it. Um, that's fine. You played it. And then it goes on sale like three months later. Well, they didn't play it three months ago. But yeah, in fine. this case, no one is playing it because yeah. it hasn't released yet. So, I've yeah, that's a, that's two hours a, of the game. 
like literally two hours because the each right. episode's about two hours long and yeah yeah so that, yeah, that was a little, little bit ridiculous. disappointing and uh again i tried playing it uh earlier this year and i played the first two episodes and again it just didn't get the hooks in me i i, I want to go back to it i am on vacation this next week so maybe i'll uh try to find the time to do it but uh, we'll see what happens um cool. in terms of sean mendez being attached i mean I'm not really sure like how much creative control he's going to have. I know he's a, you know, he's a great musician. I've actually seen him live. I went with my uh, ex-girlfriend to see him um, live in, I think Ottawa and whatever. And again, the guy's a really good voice. I don't mind his music. It's not really my cup of tea. um, But, you know, obviously him looking after the music is, is interesting because I think a lot of what makes life is strange. Great is the phenomenal soundtrack in those games, The, the, the music choices. And, uh, you know, I found some like, really awesome bands and artists through that um through those games like daughter um which is a band that i really fell in love with made yeah the, the, the soundtrack for the prequel series and did they uh, do the whole soundtrack for the prequel mm-hmm. yeah oh that's incredible i yeah. really do like daughter a lot like i think that yeah. that band is awesome that's awesome that's i didn't play the prequel i played the first game so yeah, that, that had great music too, though. Like the first it game did. had great music and it had a good compilation of music. So I, Yeah, it had like Alt J in it. So. Yeah, it did. Yeah. It, I, I got the impression that Sean Mendes is going to kind of, uh, he's producing the series and is in charge of the show's music. So he's kind of, he's going to decide on the music. I don't think he's doing all the music himself. Yeah. Um, that, yeah. I hope it's not like the entire soundtrack is just Sean Mendes' songs. I'd be like, what the fuck? Yeah. That That'd I would be. dislike, I think, just based on their – I think it's the the interesting taste in music, the choices of these indie or more independent uh, alternative rock bands that mm-hmm. – it's, it's, it's some of the magic that makes this series shine. You know, you don't want a Tarzan situation where you got like Genesis <laughs> doing every song because, yeah, take him or leave him. Phil Collins is cool, but I mean not everyone loves Phil Collins, so – yeah. It's a, little, it's a, I liked the music in that movie and I feel like me it grew too. on me over time, but, um, I don't know if everyone did cause you gotta have to like, like Phil Collins a little bit. Like it's, mm-hmm. it's just Phil Collins. So <laughs> it is just Phil Collins. Um, and then, yeah, another thing that, you know, is a little bit, um, worrisome is, you know, uh, anonymous content, the production company, uh, that's making the show. They did do uh, 13 Reasons Why. And again, I think the first season of 13 Reasons Why is amazing. It I is. Think that's one of the greatest, greatest seasons of television I've watched. And the impact it had on me emotionally and the, and the things it made me feel was, was, was unbelievable. I remember watching it and being like, just totally surprised in the direction the series went. And I think that first season is phenomenal. Season two, however, is a drop off a cliff in terms of its quality and I still made it through season two, but they retcon a bunch of choices in season one. And I, I freaking hated it. it. It really frustrated me. And I watched the first episode of season three and they literally try to make you sympathize with a rapist. And like, literally I was just like, what are you guys doing? What the fuck is this? And I stopped watching the show um, at that point. And I know they had like a season four, but like, and those those weren't well regarded whatsoever. So to me, Thirteen Reasons Why is a one season TV series, which is amazing. Um, but yeah, so I, I hope it it doesn't go the way of Thirteen Reasons Why, where they go in that weird dramatic aspect that doesn't make any sense, or they make a phenomenal first season that's based on the game, just like Thirteen Reasons Why was based on the book, and then they go in a totally awful direction that is just total crap. Um, so hmm. yeah. yeah. It's an interesting situation. You mentioned the choices, and the choices are such a huge part of the game. I, I do wonder. I you do make me think about this. I do. I'm questioning. It, it's a great narrative, but it's a great narrative that follows path, paths that aren't always the same. Although, honestly, it is kind of faux. A faux. Mm-hmm. It, it's not really real. Like you're making choices, but that you kind of end up in the same place at the end anyway. Yeah. Sort of. There is some pretty big differences, but they're they're not so large that it's necessarily a drastic change. Mm-hmm. There, there aren't that many games that give you like twenty endings. You know what I mean? And Life is Strange is not one that gives you like twenty endings. So yeah, there's a, there's I, two endings realistically, but it's yeah. it's like a coloring book. Like you can color it in your own way, but at the end of the day, it's the same picture. Yeah, exactly. Or or two slightly different pictures, I guess. Exactly. Um, 
<laughs> but um, yeah, yeah. Oh, this is good. I am curious. I, I'm also curious about anonymous content. The same. I have the same sentiments to say as you. Like the, it is a strange thing because certain reasons why is like, what are you milking here? Like, why are you doing this? <laughs> Speaking of Selena Gomez, by the way, <laughs> the last thing I know that Selena Gomez was attached to in terms of a yeah. TV series was 13 Reasons Why. Um, she's pretty good, by the way, in uh, Only Murders in the Building. She's she's mm-hmm. pretty good. The one thing I will say about 13 Reasons Why is the music in 13 Reasons Why is phenomenal. Amazing. Yeah. Oh, so. so good. Yeah. So good. Yes. So that's a good thing, too. Mm-hmm. So they're, they're thinking about music. This is like basically a music announcement. We can we can pretty much expect that there's going to be good music unless they go the way of Phil Collins. So yeah. we got it. You know, if it's just Sean Mendes, it's like you know, it's just Sean Mendes. But uh, anyways, yeah. hopefully, hopefully they make the good choices in that regard. But we'll we'll find out hopefully soon. We don't even know when this is coming out. This could be who knows. This could be another four years. You know what I mean? Like 2016, they've been making this TV yeah. series. This is a a pretty big stride, I think, but I'm not sure because it's. It's been in such a development purgatory for so long. I guess we'll wait and see, my friend. Indeed. Number two. According to Deadline, creator Jordan Peele's production company Monkey Paw Productions has signed a multi-year television deal with NBC Universal Studios. Monkey Paw has worked with Universal on numerous films in the past, such as the hit movies Us, Get Out, and most recently, Candyman. On the TV side of the equation, Monkey Paw has produced the Amazon series Hunters, Paramount's Twilight Zone, and HBO's Lovecraft Country, among others. To speak to the excitement over the new deal, Universal Studio Group Chairman Perlina Igbakwe stated, quote, The term visionary is thrown around all too frequently in our business, but in the case of Jordan Peele, it could not be more apt. He brings a clarity of purpose as well as cultural specificity to everything he does, and audiences worldwide have responded. I am truly honored that Jordan and his partner, Wynne Rosenfeld, have chosen our studio as their TV home for the foreseeable future, unquote. Adrian, I know you love Candyman. I know Mm -hmm. you love Get Out, Us. Mm -hmm. What do you make of this TV deal? I don't know if you've watched many of these TV series specifically, but uh, what are you making of this news? I think this is a really good get for NBC Universal Studios. And I think what Perlina- Here's uh, the latest news from CBC. What the fuck? I can't explain it. I can't explain it. There's just no I okay, so what happened is this happened last week too, that she just chimes in, Siri chimes in for no damn reason. But I just put the speaker in last week so that the, it's a home pod just sitting next to where I record. And it, it never had a problem. Like really last week it barely had a problem, but now it's having a problem every 20 minutes. So I'm sorry, audience. I'm sorry, Adrian, for the interruptions. Go on. It's okay. I forgive you. But uh, yeah, like I think what like Perlina Igbakwe uh, said um, in terms of like Jordan Peele being a visionary is is totally accurate. Again, I really love Candyman and I know he was one of the writers on there and Get Out and Us are just two such good horror movies. Like they are both fantastic and they do such unique and different things. Um, and Unlike uh, Candyman, I, I would argue that Us and Get Out actually kind of nailed the ending like perfectly. Um, although I, I still really like Candyman. Uh, don't get me wrong. I think I think the ending is just a little bit uh, hazy is the best way to put it uh, for that movie. Uh, but you're right. I haven't I haven't seen uh, Hunters. I haven't seen Twilight Zone, um, the old one or this new one that he's a part of. And I haven't seen Lovecraft Country. So in terms of the TV side of things, I'm not too sure what uh, what this production company can do i mean obviously lovecraft country is very well regarded uh a buddy of mine has watched hunters and he said that it was fine at best like nothing great and i know the twilight zone series was a I, i'm not too sure like if it was like super well loved or something but if i recall correctly when it was airing it was you know it was, it was pretty good um if i recall correctly um so i'm curious what what this will bring and i hope they go the route of maybe making a horror series because there, there isn't enough like horror TV shows. It's hard to maintain that suspense for long periods of time. And, you know, I mean, I guess you, you know, there's the haunting of Hill house and those, those sort of things that I've never gotten around to, but I'm curious servant. Yeah. Perfect example that, that you've been watching on Apple TV. Um, I'm curious if they can do something um, of the quality of like us and get out or Candyman. But spread that out over, you know, a 10 episode season or something like that. 
and I'm I'm pretty curious about this. Uh, I'm I'm excited to see what what they're going to announce. Yeah, yeah, it's it's interesting. I I don't I don't know. I don't know. It, it'd be cool if uh, Jordan Peele was more involved. I think that would be the thing that I'd be really interested in. Like he wrote. Candyman. He was one of the three writers on Candyman. If he could write a series or direct an episode or a few episodes of the series, like in the beginning, like David Fincher has or M. Night Shyamalan for Servant, what uh, what might we get in that case? That would be the more interesting TV series. But just slapping your name on things as like the producer, I'm not... I don't hate that, but you can't really tell sometimes how involved someone is. For instance, I feel like these guys are pretty involved, but Seth... Uh, Rogan and uh, Evan Goldberg. I think that they were relatively involved in a series like, um, what's a good example? Preacher, which mm-hmm. I think was good for the most part. You didn't like the last season. I know yeah. you didn't like it. I haven't seen it yet, but yeah. I liked it for the most part. I thought it was cool. And they don't just slap their name on, name on things. I feel like they do get pretty involved. The Boys was also produced by them. Mm-hmm. And I think it kind of, there's something, like, I feel it, that it is something that up their alley. Um Hunters is not a horror movie or a horror show, I should say. So no. it's like a almost a little strange that Monkey Paw is involved because you know what I mean? Like it's it's a little weird because it doesn't have that horror element that you'd expect from Monkey Paw. Because although Key and Peel was technically, I think, produced by Monkey Paw, I guess. Mm. Um, Key and Peel being one of the first things that Jordan Peel and his partner Keegan Michael Key, yes, Keegan Michael Key. We're a part of, but anyways, so I'm not sure. I'm not quite sure what to think of this. I am very excited for his upcoming movie, Nope. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's which we've only exciting. had, like, we literally only have a poster for, but I'm like, I'm already sold on it. Like, I don't oh, care. I'm sold, I'm sold because yeah. he's a part of it. So we'll see, but uh, yeah, jury's still out on this one for the TV deal. I mean, cool man. Number three, DC Comics recently announced that they would be hosting their second annual live DC Fandom event on the 16th of October, 2021. During last year's event, DC delivered many first look trailers and live online panels for the much anticipated upcoming DC films and TV series. This year, DC promises a trailer for director Matt Reeves' The Batman, a sneak peek at director Andy Muschietti's Flash movie with Ezra Miller, a look at the Jason Momoa starring Aquaman sequel, and some more info on the Dwayne The Rock Johnson starring Black Adam movie. Additionally, we can expect to see some reveals for the Netflix TV series Sweet Tooth, the yes. upcoming Suicide Squad spin-off series Peacemaker, oh. the slew of CW-based eh. DC series, including Superman and Lois, and some info on the two much-anticipated DC video games Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League and Gotham Knights. To speak to her excitement for the upcoming event, Warner Media Studios CEO Ann Sarnoff stated, quote, DC Fandom 2020 was a first of its kind global virtual fan experience and showcased every aspect of the DC universe with unprecedented scale and access. This year, we're taking everything that people loved about DC Fandom and supercharging it to super serve fans with even more exclusive first looks, breaking news, in-depth interviews, and insight from the stars and creative teams of their favorite DC content, unquote. Adrian, DC Fandom, part de. What are you thinking? Uh, Simon, honestly, if it's anything as great as it was last year, I can't wait. Honestly, DC fandom showed a bunch of awesome stuff. It made me excited for the DC universe uh, again. And I feel like it can also do that with, with, with this one. I'm super excited to see more of Matt Reeves, Batman movie and probably get a more concrete release date. It was supposed to be coming out this year, which is kind of sad to think about. We could have had a Batman movie um, in these like fall months. So I'm, I'm, I'm hoping we get a release date for that and I'm hoping it's early next year. That'd be super like cool to see. And if we get a deeper look at the flash movie, I know it started filming and we, we have a little bit better of an idea of where they're going to go with it. And you know, who's going to be a part of it. Um, I'm, I'm very excited to see what they're going to do with that. Um, in terms of Aquaman, I don't really care too much about it. I thought the, uh, first Aquaman movie is kind of like, whatever, uh, it wasn't great. It wasn't bad. Um, so I, I can take it or leave that one. And the, Bl- the black Adam movie, I don't know that, that that's another one where I'm like, yeah, whatever. I'm not too attached to it, but I know they'll probably somehow attach that to like the Shazam movie. They are coming out with the Sh- Shazam sequel movie. So I would guess we'll get some info on that, um, at the DC fandom as well. I think it's Shazam fury of the gods 
or whatever. Uh, yeah. This, to speak just briefly about the Black Adam movie, it's it's kind of interesting. I think we talked about this briefly earlier, but Pierce Brosnan's cast in it. There's got this cast for the Justice Society of America, mm-hmm. and um, I was really kind of excited to see what they could do with that aspect. And they've got some pretty good actors in this, so I'm curious. Is he just going to wreck shit up and just completely destroy this just the Society of America? That's kind of what I was kind of thinking might it. happen. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I'm not sure. Like, are these just B, B heroes that are not really important and ultimately they're just, just there so that Black Adam can really show his might? Yeah, they're just and cannon just, fodder. I, I kind of wonder. I kind mm-hmm. of wonder. And then, yeah, I'm not sure. I, we'll, we'll see what happens, but... Like a like a so Suicide Squad killed the Justice League situation maybe like I, you know what I mean like we don't know what's gonna happen with that game but it sounds it sounds like what that is is the Suicide Squad literally going on hits to murder Superman and various various other mm-hmm. characters in the Justice League like Green Lantern and Batman and things like that so yeah those those be- two DC games I'm very excited for I know we're not a video game podcast sorry to Kenneth Saddlebauer for talking about video games but yeah. But yeah. yeah, I'm kind of excited because also Dwayne The Rock Johnson, he pulls in a, a certain gravitas and I, mm-hmm. I think he does a great job and he's a no half measure kind of dude. So it, it could be cool. But yeah, I but think anyways. it's a easy win for DC in terms of mon- like money. Like I, I feel like The Rock brings people into theaters. He sells himself. He sells movies himself. So uh, I can I can definitely see that benefiting yeah. um, the DC universe. To speak to that kind of concept of raking in money and pulling in fans. The Andy Muschietti Flash movie is the same thing as the hype or could be the same thing literally as the hype behind No Way Home for mm-hmm. Spider-Man, for Marvel. You know what I mean? Like yeah, you're bringing but- back these these old Batmans. There are maybe, maybe two of them in this one movie. Mm-hmm. If you could bring back these really cool like flashbacks, these, you know, flat, not flashbacks, but they're bringing these characters from movies from the eighties, from the, from the two thousands, from all these various generations of what DC comics on screen has been. It could be actually brilliant and it would literally rake money in if Mm -hmm. they do it properly. That's why, again, that first trailer is going to be huge. If they have Michael Keaton as like a reveal, like they did with Alfred Molina in the Spider-Man trailer just recently, Mm -hmm. it could be pretty crazy. I, I think it would be, be nuts yeah i agree with you yeah i'm, I'm excited to see um uh, yes yeah, see that trailer I, th- I hope they i hope they come out with one and again you and i both watched sweet tooth this year and i think we both really loved it so i'm excited to hear more about sweet tooth season two and when that's coming because again that show is so topical to what's going on but it's also just so adorable and it's fun it's cute it's 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 just a really high quality tv series and it's a good get for netflix and i I want to see more of that uh, series. And of course I want to see uh, peacemaker that's coming out early next year. So that might be the first thing we get in terms of like this, this DC content that they're going to be revealing for us. So I'm excited to talk about this in more detail when it uh, all happens on the 16th of October. Me too. Super exciting. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. Now on to the montage, a sequence of our show in which I briefly present the week's smaller news stories as Adrian delivers a brisk verdict. Number one, as Variety reports, Disney has greenlit a sequel to the Jungle Cruise film starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson and Emily Blunt. Jungle Twos is what they're going to call this one. Wow. Number two, according to publication The Hollywood Reporter, The Expendables 4 is officially a go with actors Sylvester Stallone, Jason Statham, 50 Cent, and Megan Fox, a part of the cast. Hmm, interesting. Um, I haven't watched any of the Expendables movies, but maybe I will, just for fun. Number three, as reported by Deadline, the Netflix thriller series You is set to return for a season three on October 15th, 2021. Me? No, no it's a, the name of the show is called You, uh, Y-O-U. I want to watch that, uh, that series. It's pretty good. Maybe I'll watch that. Maybe I'll watch that before this comes out. Yeah, the first two seasons are good. I, I did enjoy them. It's worth a watch, in my opinion. Okay. Number four. According to Deadline, actress Sigourney Weaver and Joel Edgerton have both been cast in the crime thriller The Master Gardener from the card counter director and taxi driver screenwriter Paul Schrader. Gasp. Number five. 
is Variety Reports, HBO's In Treatment showrunner Rodrigo Garcia's next film will be called Raymond and Ray, and will star Ewan McGregor and Ethan Hawke as brothers. Okay, okay, I like Ewan McGregor, I like Ethan Hawke. Let's see them be brothers. Number six. As Variety reports, Killing Eve actress Jodie Comer has officially been cast as Empress Josephine in the upcoming Ridley Scott-directed Napoleon Bonaparte biopic starring Joaquin Phoenix. Oh, okay. That's a good uh, pair of actors right there. Jodie Comer was great in Free Guy. Number seven. As reported by Variety, Mythic Quest actor F. Murray Abraham, The Walking Dead actor Andrew Lincoln, and Westworld actor Ben Barnes have each been cast in creator Guillermo del Toro's upcoming horror anthology series, Cabinet of Curiosities. Speaking of horror TV series, this is this. Is this. Number eight. As tech website The Verge reports, due to the recent devastating COVID-19 wave, Paramount Pictures has delayed the Tom Cruise Top Gun Maverick film from its 2021 launch date to a new May 27th, 2022 release date instead. With that being said, all remaining Paramount 2021 theatrically slated films will now launch in 2022, with the seventh Mission Impossible film also having been pushed back to a new September 30th, 2022 date. That's, uh, that's upsetting a little bit. I can't wait for Mission Impossible 7. Whatever they're going to call it. Mission Impossible is so damn good. So damn good. Number nine. According to Deadline, Rocketman director Dexter Fletcher is directing a romantic adventure film called Ghosted that will star actors Scarlett Johansson and Chris Evans and will be written by Deadpool screenwriters Rhett Reese and Paul Wernick. Oh, oh my goodness. A lot of Marvel affiliation going on with this, with this movie. Number 10. As Variety reports... The rental director, Dave Franco, is set to direct a romantic comedy film called Somebody I Used to Know for Amazon Studios. The film was written by Dave Franco and Alison Brie and is set to feature Mad Men star Alison Brie and Insecure star Jay Ellis in the leading roles. Why is Jay Ellis so insecure? Sorry, Insecure star. Sorry, not. No, it's a HBO TV series. Oh. It's called Insecure. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, exactly. yeah, sorry. He's not insecure. I'm sure he's fairly confident. Yeah. Seems like a confident fella. I have a huge crush on Alison Brie. I have for many years. I see. Yeah. I see. Have you seen Insecure Insecure at all? Like any any episodes of that show? Because apparently it's really good. It's Issa, no. Issa Rae. But anyway. No, I, I haven't even heard of it. I'll be honest with you. Oh, oh okay. Oh, so yeah. you were actually confused. <laughs> sort of. I know you were, you were playing a part here. But anyways, <laughs> that concludes the montage. Ba-da-ba-boo. I have a crush on Alison Brie. That's that's fair. She's married to Dave, Dave, or otherwise known as David Franco. David Franco, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I hope they're happy together. Or maybe you hope that they're not. No, based on what you're telling me. No, I, again, I, just because I have a crush doesn't mean I want her relationship to fall apart with her husband. I'm not. I'm not an awful human being. And yeah, I figured that, but it was weird that you then mentioned that your hope. They, you hope they're happy together, almost like it, it could have been borderline sarcastic. So that's why I was just feeling it out. But um, I'm glad you not are not a sociopath. Thanks, man. I'm glad I'm not a sociopath too. You're welcome. What do you What do you got for me, Adrian? What do you got? I got new releases for you, Simon. Oh, you ready? oh, oh, yes, I am ready. We're so running a little is... long on this episode, I think. I'm yeah, not let really me... completely sure because we're recording this at the same time as the uh, Closer Look episode that's airing on Friday. So, so I'm yeah, not we... 100% sure how long each thing is going, but yeah, we're we going to find out. Two birds stoned at once, as I always say. Yes. Anyways, this is for the week of uh, Monday, September the 6th to Sunday, September the 12th. And let's get on into it. I'll just, I'm going to rapid fire through these. You ready? I am ready. I'm exceptionally ready. Let's do it. Movie number one coming out on Wednesday, September 8th, JJ plus E. This is a Netflix original movie about a young love between two people with different cultural backgrounds and classes, Simon. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm like saying like, let's get through this quickly. And I'm just fucking stuttering through the entire first one. Jesus. Uh, the, The next few movies are coming out on Thursday, September the 9th. This first one is called Blood Brothers, Malcolm X and Muhammad Ali. This is a Netflix original documentary about these two and their relationship. And uh, just a quick reminder to watch One Night in Miami, directed by Regina King, that kind of explores this relationship between them. And it is phenomenal. That movie is so damn good. Indeed. 
Indeed. Next next up is The Woman and the Murderer. This is a <gasps> Netflix original true crime documentary about oh, yes. serial killer Guy Georges. Oh, well, I hope it's I'm reviewed well. Yeah. I've never even heard of this Guy Georges. No. no neither have I. Another one of these serial killers that just didn't do a good enough job. Oh, God. Don't say that. We don't want serial killers to do a good job. That's, I'm just, I mean, hot take. Serial killers out there, don't do a good job. Sounds don't good. do it at all, actually. Don't do that <laughs> job. Switch jobs. If Switch you're gonna, jobs. If you're going to kill a bunch of people, do a bad job so that you can get caught, is what Simon Switch, wants you to say. Switch career paths. Mm-hmm. There are other places you can work. Go to go to like a like a like a like an animal factory where you just kill animals instead. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, perhaps. Or just don't kill things. That would be good. Maybe you could also do that. Yeah. Anyway, what's next? What no next res- is the movie next on the list? Oh, that was a ridiculous way to say that, but yes, next movie. No responders left is the next movie next on the next list. This list. This is confirmed by Movie Insider, and this is a Discovery Plus original <gasps> documentary about 9-11. But this oh. isn't the Spike Lee one that that has apparently interviews with truthers in it. Yeah, yes. That I think they removed. I'm pretty sure they removed it. it was, that okay. was an HBO documentary Oakley, series. Oakley, Oakley, Artichokely. And then the, the, this, there's, a, there's more movies coming out, but not on Wednesday, September the, the 8th. These movies are coming out on Friday, September the 10th, Simon. And the first one is a movie called Kate. This is a Netflix original movie, and it stars Mary Elizabeth Winstead, who I really like, as an assassin that has 24 hours to live before a brutal poison kills her. And she's using that final day to exact revenge on the person who put the hit out on her. Oh, no. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah, interesting enough. I like Mary uh, Mary Elizabeth Winstead quite a bit. I think she's awesome. Yeah, she's cool. And she's great she's in cool. Fargo. She's, she's really great. good in Fargo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's also good in um, Scott Pilgrim versus the World. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as well. But anyway, it's a great movie. Let's move on to the next movie coming out. Adrian, Prey. Huh? That's the next movie, Simon. This is a Netflix original movie. Five friends on the run. It's about uh, five friends what? who are very religious. No. Very religious. They're no. they're Catholic. No, they aren't, dude. They're Jewish. No, they're they're. Uh, I don't know what religion they are. It's not specified. They could be. Well, it's called pray. A pray, E Y Simon. You silly goose. You. Uh, oh, oh. <laughs> sorry, my mistake. Classic joke. Changing the meaning of a word that sounds the same but is spelled different. Yeah, incredible. Mm-hmm. We're just the. Uh, Full of humor on this podcast. Comedy duo here. That's right. Comedy duo of the year. Oh, yeah. But speaking of Prey, this is in a com- 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 comedy. That's what I was going to say. Comedy. It's five friends on the run, one mysterious shooter on the prowl. Oh, no. Yeah. That's all I wrote for that one. Oh, had you have read that last line, we would have understood mm-hmm. that it wasn't Prey. Like putting yeah. your hands together and speaking to God. Ah. I understand now. Prey, like the uh, most recently arcane developed video game that was came out on the PlayStation and uh, Xbox. Apologies to Kenneth Stadabauer for talking about video games. Next yeah. movie coming out, Adrian, is? Fire Drake, The Silver Dragon. This is a Netflix <gasps> original movie. And um, drakes are usually just weaker dragons. Like they're usually like less evolved or younger. Yes, that's true. And mm-hmm. this is a animated movie or... Oh, yeah, it is. Live action? Oh, yeah, okay. Live action. That's an important one. Yeah. Talking about dragons here. It's my dragon noise. I like a cat. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Anyway, continue. Come From Away is an Apple TV Plus original movie that is a, uh, a musical that was filmed live on Broadway. Think Hamilton, but less popular. Oh, Seriously, yeah, I've seen Come From Away. Have you in uh, in London? Yeah, England. Yeah, Come From Away is um, funny enough. Come From Away is based on it's a Canadian story. Did you know that? No, I did not know that. Yeah, it's a Canadian musical that 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 has kind of been shopped around the world, which is pretty cool. It's about uh, it's actually about nine eleven. They there's a plane. Oh. That has to touch down in, I think it's Prince Edward Island. 
mm-hmm. um, because they have nowhere to go because they can't go back to the United States because they ground all these planes. It's kind of about that story, and it's a musical, and uh, it's really good. I really enjoyed it when I watched it in London. So maybe I'll watch it this Friday on the Apple TV application on my yeah, TV. Maybe, maybe you will. Maybe I will. Maybe I will. You can tell me about it when you uh, when you hit the podcast next week. Watch out. Good River is up next, and this is confirmed by Movie Insider and the Apple TV app. This is a video on demand. Another documentary on this list. A lot of documentaries this week. And it's about a high school soccer team struggling to racially coexist after, they, after they're trying to go for the, some, a championship. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, sorry. Come from away. The, the plane touches down in Newfoundland. I don't know why I said PAI. Newfoundland, Canada. Anyway, continue. Pretty much the same. Continue. What's the next movie? Uh, language lessons is up next. This is uh, confirmed by the most reliable source on the internet, m.theheavennumbers.com, the Apple TV application. Now, on m.theheavennumbers.com, it says specifically that it's coming out on the 10th of September, which is a Friday. However, on the Apple TV app, it's available for pre order, but no specified date. So this might not be fully accurate. I wanted to put that in here just to let you know. Um, All righty. And this uh, this is a this is a, an exploration of platonic love between a gay man and a straight woman. Uh, the gay man being played by uh, Mark Duplass, who is probably best known for I, I know him best from uh, the League personally, uh, which is a hilarious show. And uh, you know his his husband buys him Spanish lessons, and uh, the the straight woman that he that he meets is, is the Spanish teacher, and apparently they go through like tragedy together. And again, it just explores this relationship between. Uh, these two that that have a love for each other, but it's it, but it's fully platonic, and uh, I don't know. It's very well reviewed. I'm curious about this one. Cool, yeah, it's great. Yeah, I also like Mark Duplass. He's great. Mm-hmm. Uh, Malignant is up next on this list, and this one I'm actually really excited for. I kind of want to watch it again. I've been in that horror mood. This is coming to HBO Max as well as theaters, and this is from director James Wan, who is like the creator of the Conjuring series. He also directed Aquaman, which I didn't love, but again. He's a, he's a big name in the, in, in the horror industry, and this is like a neat-looking horror movie about a woman who dreams of these brutal murders that are happening in real life at the same time and uh, kind of explores that. And I don't know. It looks it looks, it looks cool. I kind of want to watch this. Neato. Neato. Yeah. Next up is The Card Counter. This is coming out to theaters. This, is, this has Oscar Isaac in it, Willem Dafoe in it, Tiffany Haddish in it, and Ty Sheridan. Um I honestly, I feel like I've never heard of this movie. Maybe we've talked about it, but it. it well, I, I talked about it in the montage just moments ago. That, that's exactly what I was going to say. Like, I don't think I heard about it until you brought it up in the montage, and it's quite, uh, quite a coincidence. But uh, it, it's simply about like Oscar Isaac. He plays a man with a dark past, and he starts taking care of a young man, that being Ty Sheridan, to like go through a redemption arc. But taking care of this young man actually drags him back into that dark past that he so desperately is trying to escape. Let's watch it if it's in theaters near us. It is. It's uh, playing at it, the, I think, Guelph Woodlawn on Thursday. Oh, that's great. We should do yeah. it. Okay. You want to do a double feature? But yeah, what other movie do you want to see? Malignant. Oh, that's in theaters as well? Yeah. Ah, uh, that's such a different movie. I'm not a big horror guy. Uh, maybe. 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 Oh, yeah, you're off this week. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. I'm off this week. Oh, okay. Yeah, potentially. Yeah, I'll have my people talk to your people. Sounds good, man. Because we don't talk outside this podcast. Never have, never will. Anyways, what's the next movie coming out? After We Fell. This is coming out to theaters, and it's just a teenage love story movie. Just going to keep that one brief. Ah, that's the kissing booth part four. Yeah, exactly. After We Fell, out of the kissing booth. Yeah. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) My girlfriend watched, she watched the kissing booth. Trilogy three and she's like it was awful and she watched all three of them but she thought that the third one was bad the kissing booth trilogy is arguably one of the greatest trilogies in cinematic history it's so oh. amazing it's oh repeated. okay so you disagree with her is that what you're saying i disagree with her wholeheartedly it puts the dark knight oh. trilogy to shame oh okay yeah. anyway and the lord of the rings trilogy that too not Whoa! Too. You would go so far. You, we, you would go so far. I see, Simon. That's, I said it's the greatest no. cinematic trilogy of all time. What's so hard to comprehend about that statement? <sighs> yeah, I don't, I don't know. I feel like you're lying to me. I am. <gasps> no, you wouldn't. I would. I would. 
but I wouldn't lie about queen pins coming out <laughs> this week, uh, which is confirmed by the most reliable source on the internet, m.theheffernumbers.com in the trailer. This is coming out to theaters, question mark, is what I writ- wrote down here, because it might only be in the USA. I couldn't find it on like the Cineplex application, but everywhere I looked online was saying that it's coming out into theaters on this day, September the 10th, which is a Friday. So I'm not too sure about this. Maybe maybe it'll shadow drop here. Maybe I don't know. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe maybe the sources online that I followed were all incorrect. But again, it was on the official trailer and the most reliable source on the on the internet. I'm not even so I don't, I don't really know. But anyways, this movie is about some suburban women that take extreme couponing to the next level and start scamming millions from corporations while cops and detectives are right on their till tail. We definitely talked about this on this podcast. Yeah. Yeah, it's Chris, Kristen Bell and Kirby Hill Baptiste. Yeah, it is. Yeah. We definitely talked about this. Mm-hmm. I kind of want to see this. Me I wonder too. if it's going to be good. Me too, but I don't know if we're going to get it. That's the, that's the confusing thing. Speaking of, um, just to go back briefly, the card, card counter, by the way, is really well reviewed, just so you're aware. Yeah, I think it's, it's like, like it, over ninety or just below ninety. I think it's like I was gonna say over eighty because I, I I looked it up. I was like, what the fuck is this movie? And yeah, it's like eighty something. Oh no, it's ninety six. Holy shit! Never mind. There you go. The Metacritic's eighty three. Yeah. I was wrong. But yeah, I definitely want to watch this. We should definitely watch the Card Counter this week. Yeah, cool. Although I don't really like Ty Sheridan. I know. I know you say that so often. You don't like Ty Sheridan. Ty Sheridan's good, man. I just good. Think, I just don't think. He's I just don't think he's a good actor. He's not bad. He's not bad. I don't know. I don't know what you're looking at. I know he's in good movies, and I haven't seen him in too much. But he's also yeah, in bad he's in, movies. He's in good movies like Ready, like Ready Player, Player One. One. He's in bad player. He's in bad movies like Ready Player One. I'm sorry, but I beat you. I beat <laughs> and, you to say that. He's, he's in like the dark. And Phoenix even if I didn't beat you, Apocalypse. I'm not saying that I would do this, but I could easily just edit it so that I beat you anyway. You're a monster. No, I wouldn't do that. I, I wouldn't do that. If you beat me, I would. I would do it. I would. I would display it properly in the edit for the audio. Yeah, whatever. Just saying that to the audience. I'm not a cheat. Okay. You are. Ty Sheridan, pretty good actor. Pretty good actor. And he might make Adrian think that he's a great actor after we see the card counter. Yeah, maybe. Just maybe. so we'll find out. I guess. I guess. So we'll find stay out. Stay tuned, baby. Anyways, the last the last movie coming out this week. We've been going on a little bit too long. Simon is coming out on Sunday, the twelfth of September. It's a movie called Dating in New York. This is confirmed by the most reliable source on the internet, m. The numbers. dot com and the Apple TV application. This is a video on demand movie. It's about a couple that decides to do a friends with benefits contract after they had a really amazing one night stand, but by definition, is now not considered a one-night stand because they're continuing to bang. Ah, I see. Yeah. I see. And that's it. That's all, baby. That's it. That's all. Oh, that's it. That's it. That's all. That's the end of our regular scheduled programming for this episode of Split Focus. (laughs) Adrian, you got anything to add? Anything you want to say to the audience? Anything you want to say to the fans in New Zealand or perhaps Jeremy in San Francisco right now? Jeremy... I, I love you. I think you're a good man. Keep keep doing what you're doing and don't let up, man. I'm here for you. Indeed. Thank you, Adrian, for those kind words to Jeremy. And I'd like to say that you can subscribe to this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you're listening to this right now, you can likely subscribe on that, on that forum. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'd appreciate it if you did do that. I'd also appreciate it if you would write us a, a review of some sort on the podcast streaming service that you're listening to. And, um, I do appreciate you, Adrian. Thank you for joining me once again. No worries, Simon. I I appreciate you too. And thank you, audience, for listening to the 62nd episode of Split Focus, a film and TV podcast. My name is Simon Eady, and this is Adrian Pinter signing off. Hey, guys, it's me, Adrian Pinter, and I'm here with the, the, the typical show ending. And that ending is support your local theater as long as it's safe to do so. As well as Batman v Superman is a really good movie. That movie's amazing. That movie's awesome. Such a good movie. You should watch it. But yeah, support your local theater. I hope you have a fantastic day or night. Goodbye. Or whatever time you're watching this. When are you watching this? Write us in in the mails bags and let me know when you're when you're when you're watching the the time tick on whatever streaming service you're watching li- listening to this on. Take care. Goodbye. Goodbye.
Goodbye. Take care. Goodbye. Yeah, write, write us in. Write us in, write right. us in at spoolfocuspodcast at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. We didn't mention that in the podcast. Anyways, goodbye. Take care. Goodbye. Support your local theater. The theaters will die without you. <laughs>